We've had our imaging spectrometer on for about a week now and taken 125 images of Mars and already we're very surprised at some of the diversity that we've been seeing on the planet. I'm going to show you two areas today. One is very young, one is very old, and they bracket the history of Mars that's recorded in the planet's rocks. In both cases, we see surprising evidence for changes in the planet's surface environment and climate on time scales of a thousand years or length scales of just a few hundred yards. Uh, could you roll the first video, please? The first area I'm going to show you is in the north polar region of Mars, a feature called Chasma Boreal, and it exposes part of the northern ice cap. We're zooming in on it here, and you're seeing an image now taken by MRO's context imager, which shows features 20 feet across and accompanies many of the chrism images that we take. And there's the chrism image and set on top of that. Uh, could you go to the first slide, please? Uh, the first still. Okay, um, it's coming up in just a second. What we're going to show you here is our image, there we go, map projected overlaid on the surface of Mars. Now, every pixel in an image from our instrument is taken in 544 colors and it gives us the spectrum of the sunlight reflected off the planet. Different rocks, minerals, and ices have fingerprints in the spectrum of reflected sunlight that allows us to tell about the surface composition. He, we've shown here two different representations of this data. At the left is an image made out of the visible wavelengths of light that are sensitive to iron mineralogy and this approximates true color. In the right, we've taken selected infrared wavelengths that are sensitive to the presence of ice and measured the strength of the spectral signature of ice to make an ice image. And in this, the areas with more ice are bright and the areas with less ice are dark. Next slide, please. Here what we've done is taken the true color image, digitally drape it on top of the planet's topography and then rotate it and view it from the side to get a perspective of the areas that we're seeing on the surface. You're seeing an area about uh, six miles across and nine miles long. The flat area over most of the image is the floor of Chasma Boreal. In the foreground, the uh, floor is covered by migrating sand dunes. In the back of the image, you can see a 3,500-foot 3, high cliff that exposes different layers in the polar cap. Going from top to bottom, from younger to older, there are what's called the polar layer deposits, which cover most of the north polar ice cap. And beneath that, a different layer called the basal layer, which underlies much of the cap. The upper basal layer is steeply sloped, and the lower part is very gently sloped. On top of the basal layer in different areas are white spots that we've been investigating. Next slide, please. Now here what I've done is zoom in on that 3,500 foot high cliff to show you two different views of the ice cap. The top view is true color and it shows you mineralogy and the bottom view is infrared and it shows you the presence of ice. Brighter is more ice. Going from top to bottom, from younger to older, you can see in the modern polar layer deposits, subtle banding at the visible wavelengths and much stronger banding at the infrared wavelengths. And this is telling us that there are differences in the mix of ice and dust that are deposited in the polar cap as the climate changes on the scale of hundreds of years. If you go beneath that to the basal layer, and if you look at the top view that's in, in a dark gray color, uh, it is uh, different than the overlying deposits mineralogically. The sediments that are trapped in the polar cap are different at this period of time, and there's very little ice as shown by the dark color in the lower image. One exception is there are relatively small spots like the bright spot that show up with a very strong signature of ice. If you go to the bottom oldest part of the basal layer, it shows a bright orange at the top suggesting that if you go back far enough in time, the sediments that accumulated were like the sediments in the polar cap today, except they're relatively free of ice. So what this is telling us is that at the North Polar Cap over the last 100,000 or so years, there's been a really dynamic uh, history of change in climate that's recorded in the layers of ice, much like the way we would uh, determine Earth's climate change by going back and looking at a core of ice in Greenland. That's the kind of history we're seeing here at Mars. Now, could you uh, roll the next video, please?
We're going to change gears and look at a very ancient region of Mars in the equatorial region in the very heavily created highlands that date to about 3.8 billion years of age. And we're zooming in on a 20 mile wide valley called Marth Vallis, and this cuts down into the ancient highlands. You're seeing now the context image that was taken of this area by the context imager showing features 20 meters across, and on top of this, we'll overlay a, an image from our imaging spectrometer to show you the area we looked at. In the next still slide, uh, you'll see the, a different version of this image. Now, our instrument, CRISM, has a sister instrument on the European Mars Express mission called OMEGA. OMEGA mapped Mars at similar wavelengths of light to what we look at, except much lower spatial resolution. On the bank of Marth Vallis, it found deposits of clay. Clay is really significant geologically because for it to form, the rocks have to have been soaking for a really prolonged period of time in water. There are different kinds of clay, and the kinds of clay you get tell us about the environments that were there, whether the water was warmer or more salty or cooler, or, or whether there were different parent rocks. And the little orange rectangle on top of that, at the center of the image, is where chrism covered, and we measured the same area that Omega saw, the clays, at 20 times the spatial resolution. In the next slide, please, you can see two different renditions of this. In the left, it's true color, showing differences in iron mineralogy, and the dark gray areas are relatively unaltered. The orange and brighter areas are more weathered. At the right side, you can see an, uh, an image that we've constructed from infrared wavelengths, picking specific wavelengths that are sensitive to differences in the clay mineralogy. Now remember, clay tells us that the surface was wet. Differences in the mineralogy tell us something about how the environment might have been different from place to place. And in the next slide, what we've done is we've taken these colors and compared them to a library of minerals that was measured on Earth and uh, looked for a match between minerals in the different regions we see on Mars. And this is what we found. We see different kinds of clays. And that's really significant because it's telling us that the environment had, a, had to have been different from place to place. In most of the areas, we see clays rich in iron. And in restricted areas that you can see in right in the little green spots, we have uh, clays that are rich in aluminum. So what this is telling us is that on length scales, just of a few hundred yards, the conditions were varying significantly enough that entirely different kinds of minerals were forming. And now what we're going to do is, over the next several months, take about 10,000 more images like this and work with uh, analyzing these data and comparing them to uh, results from the other instruments on MRO, like HiRISE, to try to understand the really complicated history of climate change that is preserved in the planet's rocks. 